Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing with the question I need help from with you guys and I wanna show you some updates what's going on in the shop. This video should be pretty short. Um, let me get to the question. Usually it's a sniper EFI question in case you're wondering. And usually I would ask my EFI guy, a guy named Scott Clark, um, Diesel Geek, he has real tuners, EFI. I've gone to his training and stuff and usually I would just say, hey Scott, I got a problem. Um, can you help me out with it? And the way I would get a hold of him it would be through Facebook Messenger because I don't have a cell phone number um, but as you know, if you watch my videos, my Facebook account got hacked, so I don't have access to either Facebook or Messenger at all. So it's also disabled. And I've gone through a ton of process, and as far as I could tell, that dude is never coming back. So I can't get a hold of him to ask this question. So maybe if you have his number, could you email it to me? Or if you're Scott, you're watching, just text me. My phone number is 918, obviously it's on the valve covers, 918-520-3480. But anyway, um, here's the real question. This is the Holly Sniper EFI that I'm gonna run on the truck. Um, by the way, this week should have been called, I can't find shit, because it seemed like everything I tried finding this week couldn't find. I've lost a whole set of valves, and I've searched the entire shop several times. I don't know where those disappeared to, and really, I spent four hours looking for those deals. I ended up ordering new ones. But the other thing I lost was this. So this is a huge help for you Holly Sniper EFI guys. If you have the HyperSpark distributor, don't lose this connector. See that connector right here that's got the the pink wire and your connection right here. Don't lose this because I lost it. I couldn't find it forever. So I called Holly up and I'm like, hey Holly, I need to get this connected. It goes to my Sniper HyperSpark distributor. They're like, okay, here's the one you need, 558-493. That one's for a Holly dual sync distributor. That plug is not the same plug that's in this HyperSpark distributor. It will not fit in. It's the same wires as far as this goes, but that plug will not plug directly in. The only way you can get it to work is if you, um, did a whole new pin connector and connected it that way. It will not just plug in. Luckily, I end up finding this one, thank God, after two days. But anyway, here's the real dilemma. I want the sniper to control the timing. And I actually have the Holley um, HyperSpark ignition box too. I'm gonna keep this one. They said my MSD coil, I think this one's pretty good. I think it's actually better than the HyperSpark one anyway. But I want the Holley to control it but here's the problem, my trans brake. Um, the way I have the trans brake activated is it's through a 12 volt um, switch. So what happens is on my uh, monetary switch on my distributor, I press it down and will send 12 volts to the trans brake and also used to in the old engine would send 12 volts to this MSD 6AL2 programmable. So that would engage the two-step rev limiter and because it used a 12 volt input to start the rev limiter and as soon as you let off it would let off the trans brake and off this now i understand the way holly works is if you hook into the hyper spark ignition box itself you have to have a solid state relay and it acts as a ground so it can do a two-step but you would have to do it as a ground so in other words you'd have a solid state and it's ground activated something like this where it's solid state and you it would activate the ground that connects the power and that's how it works so in other words you'd have constant power there I, I really just do not like that idea because that fails, my trans brake don't work. And don't say that they don't fail, they do. Um, I like having the way it is now. So my question really to them is, can I, this is the plan, let me tell you, if you think it's wrong, let me know. Can I connect this directly to the Holly Sniper EFI, which is how you would do normally with the, do, with the, with the HyperSpark distributor, connect this to the Holly Sniper EFI, do the white wire to the MSD, in other words, the points input to the MSD box, but use the two-step rev limiter from the MSD to trigger, or will it damage the HyperSpark, which or, or the Holly EFI? I don't think that it will, because my gut says all you're doing is adding 12 volts to the ignition box, and that will then set the rev limiter. Um, but I'm not entirely sure, because I still want this to control that. Now, obviously, because this is programmable, I really don't need that to control the timing. I can actually go in there itself and I could tune a turning curve anyway. And matter of fact, you can actually add, it's got a, I think this is it. Yep, that's the map sensor. So essentially you could have it through boost anyway. So you can make it do all the stuff pretty much that that can do with this. Um, but it would be somewhat easier to have Holly just control everything, except I want that rev limiter. If you don't think that could be done or if you think there's a problem with it, I'd like to hear your solutions or what you want with that. And really the whole point of this is, it does save me a bunch of steps because this truck's already kind of wired for this. So I could pop this back in. Um, I wouldn't have to rearrange or get a solid state to do the whole trans brake thing. 
but I want to get your ideas on that. If it doesn't, I've already got the ignition box for it, so it's not a big deal. Now, there's that. Let's get on the other stuff that's happening in the shop. The truck obviously is not, it's not making a whole lot of progress to have been so busy with other stuff. Oh, speaking of which, see the pressure sensors for both. I got the pressure sensor for the EFI one and for the uh, um, carburetor when I do that. And I actually added this bung back here so I can put another map sensor so I can see if this boost sensor doesn't work. I'll have another one I can reference from redundant systems. What else is going on in the shop? Well, tomorrow's video, I'm comparing all of the overport heads that I tested, which would be the AFR 265, this Pro Max 290, and the Rotor Race Right 270. We use that on the 496, and that's tomorrow's technical video. What you see here is the valve job's been redone. That's a later video that's already been filmed, so you get to see what this all does and why I did that. As far as in the grinding room, because it's been, my ADD's going nuts, but this set of AFR heads that have a really small chamber that I'm working on in between. These are a set of Brodix Dragon Slayers for a guy that moved over push rod slots and a 4060 spacing. That one's gonna be really good. At the same time, I'm also working on these 13 degree heads for another customer. You might say, why do you work on three projects instead of just doing one at a time? Well, this one to me, of all the projects that you see here, so three different sets of heads, this one's actually the easiest to do. So what I do is I warm up with this. In other words, since I'm grinding and it's easier, um, I'm used to this one, it's easier to do. I'll grind this so I get warmed up and know how, to, how I want to get the grinder to work, how I'm turning and make sure I'm, it's kind of like a warm up set for an exercise. And then I'll go to the harder one, which would be that one and to the one I really want to get right, the 13 degree stuff. So that's why I know it sounds confusing instead of just doing one at a time, which I could, but I feel like I get a better product when I start with something and go to the other ones. So easier one, a little bit hard, hard. So sometimes I'll just do two, and I know that sounds confusing. There's something, but here's what else is going on in the shop. This is another. These are the CNC ported uh, Pro Max heads. They're using my CNC port program, so they designed this. And I did a little bit of work to them, and I'm going to explain why. I got sent the very first CNC one that came off the machine. So they copied my head that I ported for them and sent it to me, which I can sell these. So if you would like to buy one, hit me up on email, winegardenerracinggmail.com. But anyway, what they did is they accidentally put on the wrong valve job. I sent them the profiles that I use for mine and they put on the ones that they'd done before. So they said, so I went ahead and floated exactly like it came. And it was really, 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 really close to what the prototype was phenomenally. And I'll tell you, if they put out the numbers that I gave them, I should do that on any bench. And the numbers I gave them are 322. Would you like, that's it, that's all it flows. It does more, but that's what I'm gonna claim. I want that number to be on any bench you can get it. But I promise you it's probably, it's most likely on most benches higher because it was higher on mine. But I wanna give a little, you know, safety factor, I guess. But anyway, so I redid the valve job, hoping for a little bit more flow because this is my valve job on both the intake and exhaust valve now. And because of that, I left a little ridge, so I had to blend it out just to be fair with it and blend the valve job. If it was the first valve job put in, this wouldn't have been the case. Um, then refloat it. Unfortunately, doing this stuff, it only gained like two CFM on the intake. The exhaust, that, it got it right back where it was because the prototype one, when it came off, the peak flow was the same, but the 400 number was a little bit lower. So, um, this brought it right up. I'm really happy with exhaust. Exhaust to me is perfect. The intake itself, um, it's pretty good. There's just some things I should, could have worked on. Now, the prototype, by the way, also had a 70cc chamber. These are 64cc chambers. And here's some of it. And this is kind of an interesting, this, this kept me up last night. That's why I came out here. This is a 4155 bore plate. If you notice, I did not bring it up far enough. So it's got plenty of area through here, and then it starts getting a little bit tight. It should be, gra should be through the entire curve here, it should be gaining more area. Instead it gains more area, but not at the same rate that it does through this part here. And what that kind of does is it creates a little bit of, it will stall the air speed, the air will flow. At 700, I think it did like 320, uh, 322. But after that, it stays about that and gradually picks up, but not a ton, not like my Dragon Slayers. And part of the reason is this. This isn't brought out to the bore line. Usually I'll have it further out. So it's all the way gradual, so it flows all the way out. And I'm really, in my mind, I'm 
trying to see both ways. Having it like this creates more of a quench pad. We know quench, adding a quench pad on an NA deal builds more power. It does. The other thing is you bring that chamber out, you're losing compression. So yeah, you're gaining flow above say 700 lift, because I don't think it's gonna gain much in the lower lifts. So yeah, you would gain more peak flow, but you're also giving up compression and you're losing some quench. So an overall factor, the whole goal for the, all the heads is to make more power. So does this make it just look better on the bench, having it further out? Or does it actually make more power? So for right now, this is where it's at. So, cause in my mind, I'm still looking at it. I'm like, man, if I could just whoop, a little bit more on that, it'd be better. I, but it would be better on the flow bench, probably not on the engine. These are going on the dyno mule. So that's what's been done. And that's been kind of keeping me up. The other big news is this one. Let me walk around. I'm gonna take you outside. I wanna show you something. That's my son's car. He used to be my wife's car. He got his license this week. Tuesday he passed his driving test. I was so proud of him. So this is his vehicle. It is an absolute turd. So it's got a four cylinder in it. When you got the AC on, good luck. It's a little rough. Um, I took it to Robertson Tire here in Broken Arrow and had him do some maintenance. That was a that was a little bit of a bill. Brand new tires on it. it. Needs new brakes. I'm gonna change that myself, but. They did some other work to it and they did a really good job. So if you're ever in Broken Arrow, Robertson's on, a, I think they're on 145th and 101st, um, right there by the new Crunch Fitness. You should give them a contact. They're really good people, to be quite honest with you. Um, I don't know if they're the cheapest, but they're definitely treating me right. So, But anyway, he got his license, so he's going to get to drive. And why give him this car to drive? Because um, it's slow and it's safe and it gets good gas mileage. He's been working his lifeguarding job, so he, I'm getting tired of taking him. His mom's getting tired of taking him, so yeah. The only problem is the drivers here are idiots. We have a town down the road called Kuita, and those Kuitas are what I call Kuitards. They can back a trailer like it's nobody's business. I'm not a kidding. Back a trailer no matter where you put it. But merging onto a highway, it kicks their rear every time. Because we have this highway called Highway 51, and it goes from 55 mile an hour and you're supposed to get on this highway to Broken Arrow Express, so you go at like 65. Every single time, I'm so glad I don't have to drive it anymore in the mornings. Every single time, they will not, they'll be going 45, entering the highway at people going 65 and 70, and really they're going 90 because they're on their way to work. Every single time. Or they don't know it merges down to one lane, even though it's been that way for years. They're just horrible drivers. My wife is from Kuwaita, and that's why I could say they're horrible drivers. She's been living there for all these years. She still cannot figure out to get into the right lane because that's a lane that's gonna be in. Instead, she waits the last minute. It has to be that jerk to cut over every single time as people are slowing down to 45. So they're horrible drivers. So I feel bad that he's a part of that now. But uh, this, hopefully this car keeps him safe. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. Tomorrow's video, Compare some oval port heads and see how uh, see if you what you think of the results. You guys take care.